Right. We're on. We're on. Hello, everyone. Um, this is the um, community of June 7th, 2024. Uh, we have few people um, in, the, in, the, in the community call and some new people maybe would like to introduce themselves. Like Amy, for instance. Yo, hi. Oh, I'm Amy, and my favorite color is purple. Awesome. That is the one thing you need to know. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, um, let's let's go through the meeting notes. We have an announcement uh, from Nicholas. New PyScript release twenty twenty four dot six dot one. Okay, Andre, you basically just said exactly what I was about to say, which was, heads up, folks, last Wednesday, live on TV, uh, we <laughs> we cut a release of the version of, of PyScript. Um, the release notes will be in the Discord server around that time um, last Wednesday. I always post them into chat and announcements. Um, so that's it. Uh, update your script tags. So instead of 2024 5.2 is 2024 6.1 is the latest version. That's it. We should we should push that out to PyScript.com as well. Perfect. We will do that today. Awesome. It's it's like being on the Star Trek Enterprise, this, you know, where Jean-Luc Picard goes, make it so, and it just all happens. <laughs> there we go. It just happens, yeah. It just happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Great. There are Oh, the, the, <clears throat> there's now a summary of all the new features. We have a proper uh, description of all the new things. One thing that you should be aware of is that, or at least one of the things that, that, that's mo most exciting to me, is the um, new abilities in terms of uh, MicroPython terminal. Um, it's now a proper REPL and uh, it works both on main and worker. Of course, on Worker, he never blocks the main thread and everything else. But also main, he has a lot of potentials. And you can just start typing and checking and writing Python code in there. Um, hopefully, this, this didn't spoil all the other great things that we added to 2024 6.1. Um, what's next then? Agenda items. No more announcements, I think. And uh, we have... Nicholas, it's you again. It's... Updates to PyScript.net website. See pull request. I'm not gonna link that. And um, please tell us what's yeah. going on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, share my screen with you. Um, uh, bah, 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 and let's just see. Uh, uh, so can you see this? Uh, can you see um, my uh, the PyScript.net website running on localhost? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Excellent. Okay, so uh, what you need to know is um, this has been updated to the latest version, uh, but given feedback uh, from the community, um, they wanted a, a quick way of getting in touch with the community itself. So... I've changed what was the download link into um, a community link, okay? All, the old version, if we go look at uh, Py... Can you, can you see me typing in PyScript.net here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It used to be install. You click this. Just kidding. You don't need to install anything, okay? Um, uh, so that was kind of fun, but it, it didn't really do anything. Um, and so, I mean, and we've got also the calls to action, try it out and documentation and examples and things. So install, you know, basically is repeating, now go read our documentation. Uh, and it didn't reference uh, PyScript.com. So uh, I've changed it to community. And when you click it, if you look in the bottom left, it's actually just a link to our Discord server. So people can just uh, get there as um, quickly as possible. Uh, so we just say the link is on PyScript.net. And I also wanted to make sure that we put open source because uh, that was another question I got at PyCon as well. Is it open source? I thought Anaconda was making money and things like that. And well, clearly Anaconda does. But PyScript, 
has an open source component part to it and uh, we wanted to make sure that we highlighted that the platform itself was uh, was was open source now I wanted to highlight these two things uh, let me stop sharing my screen um, how do I stop sharing my screen can someone tell me how do I stop stop streaming there we go um, hopefully I'm back uh, I wanted to highlight this because I'm changing some of the content on there. And when I explained this to Fabio, he was like, mm, I'm not quite sure about that. Um, so uh, since he's not in the call, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll point him to this video when I've uploaded it later and we can have a chat. But I just wanted to highlight that as a change based on feedback from several people at, uh, at, at PyCon. Um, that's it. Uh, Andrea. I think it's the right thing to do because I understand the playfulness of the install and then it's uh, recrawling you, there's nothing to install. But install is a very heavy call to action. So it's something like, am I willing to even click the button? And so um, a joke might be lost easily because people think, wait, do I have, I mean, people might react differently. It's like, do I have to install anything to run this thing on the web? Uh, and so I think Changing that to community, any info about the community, documentation or, or no, sorry, uh, community discord uh, and, and everything else is, is really welcome, at least to me. If I go in any website, especially when I'm doing web things and I see something works on the web and I, and I read install, I instantly like have second thoughts. Yeah. It's like, what? wait, what? Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe the joke was good, but maybe it also pulled up scared somebody thinking, oh, yeah. I have to install something else. Is an extension or a browser extension? I don't know. So yeah. I think it's the right move and the right thing to do. The, the, th the, 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 the thing is, several times on the booth at PyCon, folks came up and said, so how do we connect with you? How do I get in touch with the community? And I'd have to go, well, go to Discord, now search for PyScripts, down a bit, down a bit, scroll down a bit. Yes, it's that one there, now click that. Whereas if I could just go, if I could just say, go to PyScript.net, it's the fourth link, um, you know, in the calls to action, then then people will easily find it. I think it's, yeah, it's, but, it's, it's more user yeah, for yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. But I thought if I if I if I show it and then, you know, folks can see uh, again, I was thinking of Fabio because I, I mentioned this when it was the sprints and he was like, mm, I'm not sure about that. So anyway, that's it. That's it. That's it for me. Basically, that that's all it is. Uh, unless other people have questions or comments on that. OK. Are there any other questions? Oh, good. So next item is from Emmy. Introductory help for PyScript and how to use it. I don't know if this is a question or a great <laughs> um, help for us to uh, even spread more how to do things. But so the floor is yours, please. Wait, say that again. Sorry. <laughs> I'm able to reserve my like agenda until the end, if that's fine with you, three. And for the rest okay. of the call. I don't mind. I don't mind. I just adding instead of swapping things. So I'm next, actually. Um, it's about Pi Editor. Cumulative fixes and improvements. Um, there is a merge request already. And maybe I should share my screen. Uh, each and never okay share your screen <laughs> it's always a big adventure sharing screens with discord <laughs> there's less yes okay let me be sure you have the best out of my internet connection can you see my screen uh, we can see inception <laughs> inception that's that's good that's good so yeah um well you don't want to see the agenda you know the agenda already so where are we um <laughs> In Py Terminal. So there were a few things that um, users, or at least Chris, uh, asked me about um, how do we do a code folding? And I was like, what the hell is code folding? And it was like, you know, your editor does code folding when you when you are in your editor, you can do stuff like this, these, these, these. And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. Um, because there are people using PyEditor <clears throat> extensively. And so 
there could be actually quite some uh, some logic, and so that's implemented now because Code Mirror is awesome. And I went through all the documentation to find that it was an uh, there was an add-on, and then this 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 and that. I tried a thousand things, and at the end of the day, all I had to do it was just to tell Code Mirror to bootstrap with gutters and. And these with full gutters through and these two things. So <laughs> a lot of <laughs> sort of wasted time from my <laughs> from my perspective. But at the end of the day, it's because um, they embedded some add-on in the co mirror core, um, and and I'm super happy that there's nothing else I have to do because otherwise there is a documentation. You have to specify gutters, and then how do you want to fold code? And at the end of the day, it's just uh, I don't know. Let me let me do uh, here if I do. Yes, test uh, and then uh, a equal one, b equal two, um, c equal three, whatever you know. And now I want to print. Uh, actually, I can't print anything because I'm not returning anything. Oh, this is another thing I forgot. The tab um, return a plus b plus c, and then um, I got test or print test. It doesn't matter. I'm not even going to execute this code. It's just to show you that the, woo, I can wrap <laughs> all the definitions and things woo. in folding. <laughs> I, I haven't tried the class thing because maybe I can wrap methods too. Oh, should I try that? Yeah, try it. Uh, class, thing. class thing, literally. Um, def init self. I don't know if this, okay, this the tab thing is annoying. I need to fix that too. Uh, but maybe in another merge request. So I have the class. I know you need the, and... you need the uh, colon. Yes. There you go. Yes. Thank you, human linter. Um, <laughs> that works perfectly. Okay, this is the first time I did it. And it works. And it works. <laughs> like a charm. So, love it. Um, awesome. Well, that's one thing from the Py editor. The other thing is that um the actual uh shift enter or control enter or meta enter whatever keystroke you have to execute code before it wasn't doing anything or actually it was executing code but it wasn't showing the results so i had a lot of uh, um test and nothing was happening and then when, when i was clicking run uh, i was seeing the incremented results and so that's been fixed. Now, if you shift enter whenever you want to actually execute your code because you finished writing, you don't need to reach the, the run button. You just shift enter and it works. Um, another thing about run button, if you somehow through keyboard navigation, you manage to reach it, I think this got fixed already previously, but now it's explicit that once you click enter, it blurs. So that um, by now, there's no accident that you click enter and then you think you're still typing, you click enter again and you run the code twice. And that was a requirement as well. And uh, what's next in terms of, terms of requirements? Um, yeah, so handle event. Handle event is, uh, is something that, um, let me refresh the start from the scratch. So I'm gonna grab this script type. So what you see here is the this script already created the editor and everything else. So now I'm gonna uh, refer to, this is a dev tool thing. So I can say $0 and $0 is the element that I'm highlighting in the, in the elements uh, panel view. And maybe you don't see everything and maybe I should make it bigger. So I have this. And now the requirement was, I want this code. So I want to use PyScript. I want the Py editor. But actually, I don't want the Py editor to create a worker and to run the code in the WASM interpreter. I want my code to eventually, not necessarily, um, it's not yes or no. It's like it might execute in the worker or I want this specific code, especially when it comes to connecting or sending this code to 
uh, robots, <laughs> I want this code to do something else. And in order to do so, because we are in the DOM field and it's all about even listeners, um, we can override. Uh, actually, we can retrieve. Handle it end, and we have the original handler for for any anything that happens when it has to execute. The original handler is our own thing, but we can also say um, handle handle event equal, and we receive an event, and this event also will contain um, a code property, and we just don't we don't want to execute the code. We just want to use this code to do something else. And right now, I'm, I'm just going to log the code, and that's it. So when I do this, and I, oh, that didn't work. OK. Oh, yes, sorry. It, it, it is working. It is working. Uh, You've it, oh, it okay, twice. OK, it yeah. is So you, you see the code is logged, and here's the catch. If you don't want that listener to also execute things, you can use um, a, a good old um, web listener things, which is return false. Uh, or there are two ways, return false or event dot return value equal false. But I think the easiest way to reason about this is just return false. And so when you return full, so you're basically telling the, the, the logic internally, do not keep doing whatever you're doing. So you, you, you can see the, the counting of my login is increasing, but there's no update. And I, yeah. can, I can do that. There's no update on the DOM. So basically, this gives anyone the ability to completely take over the logic behind the Py editor. So we bootstrap, code mirror, we do all the things with Python embedded in it. We do the code folding, we do the, we add the shift enter, control enter, and all these kind of magic strokes. So we do the bootstrap. And then not necessarily we want to execute code further down the our own pipe. So we don't want to create a worker and everything else. And this was a requirement because somebody wants the Py editor to work in a way that they can interface also with um, Spike Prime or any other embedded uh, hardware and say this this code sh probably shouldn't execute in MicroPython on the web it should actually execute on the board uh, and that's it and whenever we want to give back the original intent we do handle event which I previously stored and so now this is actually our own callback uh, and now everything works again as expected so I can click, I can control. So, so it's just back to back to normality, whatever it was before. So now I'm pressing shift enter and it works. Um, I can keep pressing shift. I can just hold it and uh, yeah, look at that. That's that's fast enough. And that's it. That's my demo. <laughs> and improvements around the Pi Editor. The merge request is up. I've tested all the things also with you right now. And it, it's been published as a um, canary developer preview in NPM already. And so if you're happy, Nicolas, because you are the reviewer, please, please approve. And, uh, and let's, let's move that editor forward. Thanks. Any Perfect. question? Perfect. I'll, I will uh, get that reviewed uh, by the end of today. Um, so that because uh, tomorrow I'm out. Um, yeah, we're not releasing yeah. tomorrow yeah, anyway. No, no, so exactly. Whenever you have yeah, yeah. time, please. Do yeah. Review. If it, if I if I don't manage it because I've got to take uh, one of my sons to his piano lesson as well, so I might have to rush. Um, so it might be Thursday, but I'm going to try and get that reviewed uh, by the end of today. Um, cool. Um, right. Okay. So moving forward, I'm um, I'm afraid, Amy, you you are. <laughs> The, the the last item in the agenda so please tell us what it is about i just wanted to figure out because was it i picked up PyScript recently as a very like novice coder 
my most experience that I've really done was like it's just my, like college courses that I'm taking for CS. So I've been really getting stuck on trying to use PyScript and understanding all the basics of it. So I'd rather do, have done it on call. I've read the documentation of it, but for some reason I just have not been clicking on my head. So I want to see if I could get some help while on call to figure all this type of stuff out. This this is a really great question because if um if we can help you successfully on this call and there are other people and they pop up in Discord, we can always go. You see that YouTube link? <laughs> At uh, 30 minutes in, uh, we answer exactly your question as to how to get started with PyScript. Um, I'm looking at Martin. Well, I'm looking at all of you, but I'm looking at Martin. I wonder if a quick demo... Well, there are two things. Number one, Amy, what what would a success what would a success criteria be for you for the next, like, half an hour? Um... And B, uh, the answer to uh, how do I get started with PyScript is generally you go to PyScript.com. Um, and Martin's actually the team lead for PyScript.com. So I can't think of a better person to explain how that works. And Fabio, uh, a, a different Fabio, is is also on the call. He also maintains PyScript.com as well. So uh, so those those two points for you, Amy, what's, what's the outcome that you want to see here? Like this one main outcomes that I want to see really was um what is it? So I guess just understanding a little bit more of what the PyScript Tomo really does. The description that you guys have given was like it basically just helps tell them the Python script to talk to the index and how all or to talk to the HTML code and how all that really helps. And so I just wanted a little bit more clarification on the Tomo. And then another main point that I wanted to bring up was just some I guess just a little bit more on just how you could really just execute functions and get those outputs from PyScript to the HTML. Okay. Um, uh, so, um, at this point, I'm hoping someone's going to go, and I don't mind if it's me, uh, but, uh, you know... Um, I can go. I can go. You, you, can, you can go? Okay. Um, About the top one? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, go for it. Do you have something else in mind? Uh, well, I thought it, it would be... Um, no, not really. I, I was just going to make something up off the top of my head. Um, uh, I was going to use the pirate app, actually, and talk through the pirate app in the docs. Um, okay. and, and so you, you, go, you go. I will, uh, I will be too, too, yeah. too uh, abstract uh, in terms of concrete examples. So okay. It's okay. Pretty... okay, so before I start, Amy, ask questions. Just interrupt. I won't be able to see you, so just unmute and ask questions. Um, and for everybody else who does know what uh, I'm presenting, you know, also interrupt and tell me where I've missed something out or there's a clarification or did you know or something like that. So I'm just going to share my screen again. Got it understood. Beg your pardon? I got it and understood. Like ask questions wherever. Yeah. yeah, just just ask questions. So you can all see my screen and it should be uh showing you PyScript. Uh, uh so let's go to docspyscript.net. Okay. So with beginning PyScript, um we use, uh, th this is actually a PyScript app embedded in the page. So, hello, Amy. Just translate that. Ahoy, Amy. Okay, so it's going to translate English into Pirate. Okay, and um, at the bottom, you can actually see there's a link directly to it. Um, but what I want to do is go to PyScript.com. If I go view the code, um, I'm assuming you've seen this already, PyScript.com. Okay. Uh, I have, at least a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. So essentially, um, on PyScript.com, you've got three things. You've got your HTML. I'm assuming you're familiar with HTML and all the tags and blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah. the, the most important thing up here is, um, is that we reference PyScript 
that's the thing that kicks it off. Um, and then I'm able to create um, uh, my user interface with, with HTML here. Uh, Main.py just contains my Python code. Um, and uh, because I, <laughs> I'm using PyScript.json rather than PyScript.toml, um, but this, this would be where the uh, settings would be. So what I can do is um, um, read only versions are not. Uh, you are in a locked version. Go latest. Go latest. Yeah, I was just uh, thinking if I go to the latest. Okay, so if I add a file and call it a PyScript.toml, okay, uh, so these are basically configuration files. They're the same. Um, because in the, in the web world, most folks use JSON for this sort of thing, and in the Python world, most folks use Toml. PyScript understands both because we want to honor both traditions, okay? But essentially, what I'm saying is that I have this script and it's a Python script, type equals pi. And this is where you find the source code for it, which is this main.py file over here. Um, and the configuration um, for, uh, for this version of Python can be found in this file here. So let's go and turn that into PyScript.toml and save it. And if I try running it, I should get an error because what's going to happen is uh, it can't find the module named R, okay, which is the thing that I use to translate English into Python, into Python, into English, okay? Yeah. So if you, if you look, uh, what I can do is say something like uh, in here, I can say packages equals, and then I give it a list of packages from the Python packet index that I want to have installed whenever I visit the web page with Polyglot in it. So that's where I'm going to put R in. So essentially, the config file that we can see in here is telling PyScript how to set up the environment in which to run. And one of the most common ways that you set things up is by saying, and actually, I need this library and that library and the other library. And so if I go to pypi.org, a Python package index, I can go and search for all sorts of interesting um, things, including R, which was written by yours truly. Um, and I can go to the home page and read the docs and all of that sort of stuff to find out how it works and blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Read the docs. Okay. Um, I had one like, question, though. Yeah, go for it. One of my main questions was, let's say like you like let's say your code is as basic as like nothing much, nothing less. You don't even you're not trying to import any packets, you're not trying to do anything. What would the configuration file do with then? Uh if you're if you don't need any packages, an empty configuration you don't even need uh config then. So I shouldn't view the config as a bridge between index and and um, main or, or the HTML and the Python no. um script. No, they, those two are talking regardless. Yes, exactly, and that's what this line does is connect index.html to main.py. We're saying I've got a script, and it's a Python script type equals py. And you can find the source code of my Python script over in main.py, i.e. this file over here. Um, and should you need to, and only if you need to, and often you will, uh, you have a configuration which tells PyScript how to define uh, the environment in which your Python code will be run. For instance, I need this module. Um, and, and, and that's essentially what you've got going there. So if I run it now, now that I've said I want you to use this module, uh, it, it should work again. So, oh, hey, Amy, there we go. So that's 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 the config. Um, and you said there was a second thing that you wanted to know as well, uh, which escapes me at the moment. I guess because I was just having a, a, this small issue also while running through a Py, while running through like index and Python, yeah. I guess just, Simple inputs and outputs, like I input something in index and then I'll put something in, or I put something in HTML and I put something in Python script. Yeah, 
Okay, so this is exactly this is what ha huh, this is why I chose the pirate example. This is this is precisely what the pirate example is doing, because if you look, we have an uh, an HTML input in, input text box, okay, with some placeholder. So um, so I do that, and I have a translate button which I can click. Okay, that's this thing here, and then I've got a div with output uh, as its ID. Now the interesting thing here is that um, there are a couple of ways of doing this, but pi-click is perhaps the easiest one for, for current purposes. I'm saying pi-click means uh, if you click my button over here, um, there is a translate English function in my Python code somewhere. And I want you to call translate English uh, when I click the button, okay? So if I go to if I go to my Python code, there is indeed a translate English uh, a function that takes an event because when you click anything or, or interact with the DOM, you get an event um, that represents that interaction. But I'm not actually using that. And PyScript gives me something called document and document represents in code the contents of my HTML. OK, the, the page that I see here as defined by the HTML here, okay? So I can say my input text is going to be document.querySelector something with the ID English. So if I go back to my index and I can see that the input text box here has an ID of English, okay? And then the English is actually going to be the this input text box, the value of that input text box. Okay, so I'm going to type uh, hello Amy in there. So hello Amy is now the value of that text box, which I can get with document.querySelector English and I bind that to input text and then input text.value is bound to English. So English is now a string, which is that string. And then I say there's an output div, which is uh, the thing in the uh, in the document with the ID of output. So if I go have a look, if you remember, here's the div. There's actually nothing in it when you first load the page. So let's just do that so you can see what's going on. So that's the default state. There's nothing in it. But now that we've got a reference to that output div, I want you to set the inner text of that div to however R translates the English that we've just grabbed from this text box. And that's it, really. So grab a thing from your web page. Grab a thing that you want to write to. Set the inner text to whatever it is you want to uh, you want it to be. Okay. And so I can go. Yeah. Hello, Amy. So with the event parameter, is the event parameter necessarily needed as well, or is that one also as subjective as total? Because okay. you'll be regardless, of, like hitting a button, and it will be going through it. So in this particular case, I don't use the event in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, all event handlers, so anything that has like pie click, all these, a, a, a function that handles a pie click needs to have an event argument uh, because it will always be called with an event argument, uh, but you, you don't actually have to use it. I could easily put that there as you know indicating i'm ignoring it or uh ignore me uh it doesn't need to be called event uh but i just i'm just not using event in this example here okay so but regardless of it will still log that like um, it will still pass it, it will still pass in the event yeah i um, got it are you sure nicholas I'm not entirely sure that's true. Is that the voice of Fabio? Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, it, it, I've got a feeling it, it depends on the interpreter, I think. I think in PyDide, it probably allows both, but MicroPython, I'm not sure if we... I, I was just going to say, well. it, 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 it okay. depends. Uh, events are always sent by the DOM. So whenever there is an event, the event is sent. So that's true with when, and that's true with events translated. So yeah, event the, fact that it's sent, the fact that it's sent doesn't mean you need to specify it. That's what I'm saying. 
I'm pretty oh, sure you uh, need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the thing is, Fabio, well, if if you if we call translate English, let's just try it without having event defined in the signature. We're likely to get was called with one argument. It should, it should complain that yeah. the arguments is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Take, but, take the pyodide though. Like, sorry, you can use pyodide instead of MicroPython. Is no, this, this is pyodide. Oh, this is pyodide. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. So I think they. Can you do with the when decorator instead? Oh, I'm pretty sure with the when. The yes, it's the when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, then. This was supposed to help our user asking. Now we're making more confusion. Yeah. So, so this is this we is can do later. To, uh, this yes, is supposed to be right, an introductory right, thing. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Sorry, Amy, that's fine. Right, that's fine. Ignore the last four four minutes. Uh, but uh, that's okay. you know, when, when when the creator of PyScript turns up, Fabio, uh, you kind of listen. So um, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to create more confusion. Uh, but I, yeah, I remember I fixed this, so I was confused. Uh, I think it's just for the when decorator. Okay. okay. Um, you fixed it's the also when? worth saying. Sorry? You fixed that in the when? Yeah. Why the when will not receive the event property? Or or is just doesn't matter? Is is that the case? Oh yeah, because we um, have an if arguments or if arguments and uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we can post. We can post. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't wanna okay. sorry for the confusion. No 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 no, don't worry. So uh so let's just put that aside and Amy, are you any more questions? I mean, for me, that's basically all. I'm, I've just been racking my brain at some of the like some of the basic stuff. And I was like, why is my script not working? Because it's literally just getting the input and out printing that same input. Yeah. But this has cleared up a lot of it for me. Okay. So yeah, thank you, um, thank you, Nicholas, and the rest of you. Three. You're you're welcome. I'm. Um, I just want to make sure. Um, J Amy and anybody else who's watching this afterwards. Uh, we have this Discord server. You should go visit it. And uh, we don't mind how stupid you think the question is or how daft you think the question is or how simple you think the question is. There's no such thing as a stupid, daft or simple question. Just ask. Um, we would be delighted to help. Um, this is why we're doing this. Um, and I see um, the chair has his hand up, but the chair's supposed to be able to interrupt. So anyway, that's confused the hell out of me. Andrea. <laughs> No, this is uh, not a chat question. It is just okay. a regular question. So um, I wrote in the channel, but of course you were sharing. Probably you didn't read it. We wrote explicitly in our docs, we need to tell PyScript how we want such Python environment to be configured. And this is the, uh, the user guide around configuration. Maybe we can reward that. If you need anything extra, you need to actually tell the python environment how to be how to be used because i think when i read when i heard um what if i have an empty config well an empty config is pretty normal because in pyscript.com that's what we create anyway um but at the same time it's not super needed i mean it's something there as a convenience so the moment you need something you can just add in there uh, in the documentation we are actually saying that we need to tell PyScript how we want such Python environment to be configured. And yeah. I think that might be slightly misleading. You, you, um, you, you make so really the, the, question, the question wasn't, the question was legit to me. Yeah. And uh, exactly. hopefully, Amy, <laughs> this, this, this call helped you uh, a little bit. The, the, uh, it's worth pointing out if you, if you spot problems or parts of the docs that aren't clear, Anything like that, just let us know as well. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure that the docs work for folks. So, you know, tell us when they don't work. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you. So thank you. Great stuff. All right. So as a chair, I might say there's nothing oh. else in the agenda, but five your joins and there are hands up. <laughs> Very, very awesome. quickly, I don't want to take more time, etc. Uh, just a heads up that um, Mark and I have been pairing on the web, PyScript.web branch, and I feel like it's super close to be ready to merge. I think most of the things are Martin and I being a little picky. Um, so uh, if you're all okay, I would 
try and merge it this week and potentially <laughs> release early next week or something like this friday afternoon we should be able to release confidently no matter the time of day fabio that yeah, works for me too uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and cool. and that actually should be helpful for this type of scenarios too yeah perfect <laughs> that's it easy peasy okay thanks um there are new people joining the the call if they have any question, uh, because we basically already went through the whole agenda and we don't have anything else to discuss. So if there's any question, any anything you would like to share, ask, um, please. I think, okay. I think we're at the end. Oh, okay, I think we are at the end. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so thank you all. Um, and see you next community call.